In this DSAM demo video, I show how to use M plus to specify a single subject or N equals one time series model. I make use of a hypothetical example, which consists of daily diary measures based on two questions. The first one is how close do you feel to your partner right now? And the second one is how much tension was there in your relationship today? It's important to notice that there is an implicit lag relationship between these two variables. So closeness is really about the current moment, whereas tension is about the entire day preceding this moment. And those kind of aspects of your measurements will be important also for the kinds of models that you want to consider. The data are in long format, which means that every row represents a different time point, in this case a different day, and the columns represent the two different variables. I plotted these data using R, and what we see is that both variables fluctuate over time, more or less around a constant. We see there are some missing values, and these are indicated with the code minus 999 in the data file. And what we want to do now with time series analysis is we want to see to what extent we can predict these fluctuations and whether, for instance, the amount of tension a person was feeling is predictive of how close they are feeling and vice versa. When we move to the code and we look at the variable commands, this is where we have to indicate the names of the variables and they have to be indicated here in the order in which the variables appear in the data file. So the first one is closeness and the second one is tension. I also have the use variables option here and say I want to use both variables and this means that I will actually be able to specif specify a model using closeness and tension. It's a bit redundant because these are the only two variables in the data file, but yeah, this can be used also later on to select certain variables if you have uh, multiple variables that you actually don't want to use. In the missing um, option, we indicate which code was used for the missing values, in this case, minus 999. When we move to the analysis command, we see that we are going to do Bayesian analysis. Now, there is a lot to say about this, uh, I will make another video and for now skip this command. In the model command, we can actually specify the model that we want. And here I'm going to say closeness on tension. So that means closeness is predicted from tension. There will be an arrow going from tension to closeness. Closeness is now a dependent variable, which means there will also be a part that is not predictable from tension. And that's indicated here by this little arrow. We can write this also in a regression equation where we say closeness at occasion t is regressed on tension at occasion t. Beta here is the regression coefficient and there is a residual part that also varies over time and that's this zeta. You also see an intercept here. We don't see this in the actual path diagram but we will see this later on when we look at the parameter estimates. Here we add to the variable command the option lagged and we indicate we want a lagged version of closeness. And I say I want it to be lagged by one time point. So this means we're going to get, in addition to closeness at occasion t, we also get closeness at occasion t minus one. Now because these are daily diary data, we can think of this as yesterday and today. Now I can include this lagged version also in the model that we specify. So for instance, I can say, I want to regress closeness today on closeness yesterday and on tension today. And the closeness at the previous occasion, so the, the lagged version is indicated by this n% percent one. So this is referring to closeness at t minus one. This arrow from closeness yesterday to closeness today is often referred to as autoregression or inertia. And um, it Im implies that there's carryover from closeness experienced yesterday to closeness experienced today. We can also um, write this as a um, regression equation. So we have closeness today regressed on closeness yesterday, so t minus one, and also on tension today. And of course, there's still this residual part that cannot be predicted from the two predictors in our model. In the next step, we can also ask for a lagged version of tension. 
So now we also get tension at t minus 1, or yesterday. And we can decide to have tension today modeled as a function of tension yesterday and closeness yesterday. So we add this line of code, so tension on closeness t minus 1 and tension t minus 1. So that's with the m percent 1. And that adds these two arrows here to our plot. This one again would be referred to as autoregression or inertia. And this one here going from one variable at t minus 1 to another variable at occasion t would be referred to as a cross-legged regression. Whereas this one here would be just a cross regression. It's not lagged because it's from a variable at t to another variable at occasion t. We can now also write uh, the regression equation for tension. So we see we have tension regressed on tension at the previous occasion and closeness at the previous occasion. And because tension is now also a dependent variable, there will also be a residual part that cannot be predicted. And that's this little arrow here, or in the regression equation, it's the zeta. We can also include the regression coefficients in our path diagram to even make the connection between the equation and the path diagram stronger. So we see we have the autoregression here, closeness on itself at the preceding occasion. It's this autoregressive parameter, phi, it's this parameter that we see in the first regression equation. Or for instance, if we look at the cross-legged effects of closeness yesterday on tension today, we see it's this beta coefficient here, which we see in the regression equation over here. So this is it for the basic time series models. And there will be a different video showing you the actual estimates that come out of this.